Hello, this is Langston Key with Stochastic Grammars, Chapter 6 in Game AI Pro. Stochastic Grammars sounds like a very strange word, but the best way I found to understand it is basically stochastic means random-ish, and grammars are like rules. Now, random-ish doesn't mean complete randomness like noise, but randomness that can be influenced by other statistical models or uh, weights. So this is how I will format all stochastic grammars throughout this presentation. I'll have a name of the rule, and then I'll have the output on the rule on the other side. This is similar to a more official way of formatting these that is found in a chapter, uh, but this will be useful for the presentation. And just as an example, rule one would be the name of rule one. And the first rule is any digit. And rule two would be rule one minus all the negative digits. And so rule three, we could say and make a new rule uh, that contains the previous rules. For example, in this case, rule three might be rule one plus rule two. Now, the advantage of formatting stochastic grammars in this way is we can make certain statements about the output of the grammar that are always going to be true uh, or true most of the time. So in this specific case, because it's very deterministic, we can make the statement that rule three will always be bigger than rule one because it's rule one plus a non-negative digit. Next, a typical use of grammars are, are in text, right? So this might be a rule for a predictive text stochastic grammar. The algorithm might see T as an option. It might see P as an option, or it might see Oh, however, most of the time we don't imagine when we type CA that it's going to be um, a, chemist a chemistry equation starting with calcium. So we use a distribution that looks something like this, right? It's not pure random. Next, the understanding that grammar does not have to equal words. Uh, grammar is just a set of rules and a syntax. So that means we can make grammars out of almost anything. In this specific case, we made a grammar describing the movement of the orange ghost in Pac-Man. Um, as you can see, we have a direction decision. Um, those bars mean a random choice. So we have a random choice between left, right, uh, forward, and back. And the way this might be used in a game looks something like this. So first, the ghost will come to an intersection, and then it will ask its grammar, hey, I need a navigation route. And the navigation route will say, go left. It'll randomly choose that one. And then it will continue doing this until it reaches a one it cannot do. So for example, this one can't go right. And in this specific use case, um, another advantage of grammars is you can just keep retrying. So if it's not available, then you just go to the next one. Now, grammars don't have to just be pure random, as we've already described, and the other ghosts are not in Pac-Man. They take into account other things like the player's position and other ghosts' position when making their direction decision. So it would not look like 25, 25, 25, 25. It's going to actually adjust in real time based on those other weights. Now, another cool thing you can do with a uh, stochastic grammar is use an infinite sequence using a window, or essentially a buffer of what's currently uh, being understood by the rules, you can use the context of the previous output to use in the new input and achieve an effectively infinite sequence. In this specific example, this is a word prediction, like we already said. However, this can be expanded to be used with ingrams, which basically means chunks larger than one word or one like chunk of information. And so using ingrams, you can uh, do larger sequences of uh, letters, uh, words, or actions in the case of a game. Now, this might seem familiar, but we aren't gonna talk about large language models. The cool part about the advantage of these grammars is they're better in a game development context is because they're all designer friendly layers. They're all things that designers can actually tune themselves and have an understandable output. Here's the other thing it might seem familiar to, behavior trees. And yes, behavior trees are considered to be a stochastic grammar, even utility-based ones.
We're actually writing stochastic grammars right now, thanks to Spartan Swashbuckler. And utility-based approaches are just kind of one way you can use a stochastic grammar. Um, a deterministic one is another way. But the more sort of, I want to say, typical way using the distribution is like essentially adding a decorator to every single choice that your Spartan Swashbuckler could make and then weighting those not randomly, but based on a distribution determined by variables in the game. And that is my presentation on stochastic grammars. Whether you use a node-based approach, random distribution, or noise, they're all basically just randomish rules. I hope you guys have a great day.